Right, well I keep trying to do an introduction to this video, but I keep being bombarded by wildlife occurring when I'm trying to do it. I've seen two hares run past whilst I've been doing this, and there's been a marsh hare coming straight towards the cabin that has keep pulling me away. But anyway, I am here on RSPB Havergate Island. Um, I am back for another year. I came here last year, absolutely loved it. Couldn't wait to get back to photograph what is easily my favorite mammal in the UK, and that is the brown hare. Um, you know, I'm here for a week to make a collection of images to kind of add to my portfolio of work um, that I've been doing over the last few years and just to really kind of push my images and make something a little bit different. Now, one of the ways I have done that this year is I've kind of brought a mixture of gear that is a bit different from what I'm used to. The 302.8 is gone and I don't have any DSLRs with me, only my mirrorless cameras. So that should be quite fun. The Z9 is mounted to oh, the 600mm, of course. Um, I'm hoping to do some really, really tight portraits with as one thing. You know, getting those perfect out of focus backgrounds and stuff like that. And then secondly, I've got the new 17 to 28mm 2.8 wide angle that I'm looking to kind of use and get those more environmental shots, wide angle images. A perspective that's very hard to get with brown hairs on most locations and it's one of the reasons that I really am attracted to be back on Havergate and, and be working here. And here's a massive thanks to the RSPB uh, for letting me stay out here in the little cabin that is a wonderful little cute place to be. Um, it's great because I don't have to camp and it's keeping me out of the rain that has been absolutely smashing it down this morning. I woke up at about 4.30, got out, had a lovely sunrise and then ever since then it has been belting it down with a massive storm. But uh, I'm hoping that based on the weather forecast it's meant to get a bit better this afternoon and then I can get out and get a few pictures. Um, even right now, you know, one o'clock, it's... Um, pretty harsh in terms of the sun so i need to wait for it to dip a bit but um, there is at least some cloud that means that if the marsh harrow does decide he wants to come back along here i might have a chance at an image or two because he never seems to be around when the light's good or when i've got the right lens on because the moment i put my wide angle lens he flies straight past that's really annoying but it is what it is and that is what wildlife photographers have to deal with but uh, yeah this afternoon we're going to get out make some portraits and uh, with any luck, find some fantastic hairs for some really nice pictures. Anyway, I'm gonna finish this tea before it goes cold or I see a marsh harrow and have to dash out the door again. Right, well the storm has passed over, that's quite nice. Seems to be pushing across, that hopefully means that it will clear the sun as it starts to set and I might have a chance at some light. You know, conditions like this can be great sometimes. You get that kind of really heavy cloud that breaks apart and then you get all the light coming through. It can really lead to some really excellent pictures. One of my favorite shots from last year actually that uh, really worked brilliantly was when it was hammering it down for hours when I was here. I was laying out, you know, decked out in all my waterproofs and literally the weather cleared the light came out and I got a beautiful portrait of one of the hares that I've been watching. And you know, if it does throw it down with rain, well, I can get some cool pictures of that. Decked out, got all my waterproofs on. Um, I've got my waterproof jacket under my smock. The smock is over the top just to protect my Gore-Tex. There's a lot of gorse and stuff that can rip a hole in my rather expensive Gore-Tex jacket, so I don't want it to do that. Um, and I'm literally as lightweight as possible. Camera, got the Z9 uh, with a 600 mil on the tripod, binoculars, and I've got flash gun in my pocket. Just in case we get a bit of rain and I just want to pick out the details, might be handy for that, but probably won't use it. Other than that, the only other thing in my pocket is a little umbrella that's quite handy when it really hammers it down, and my waterproof cover to go over the 600 mil, because you don't want to get this wet. Even though it's all weather sealed and everything like that, if it's hammering it down, I want to have a proper cover. Right, I'm gonna go and get into position, and ah, there's a barn owl. I mean, he's miles off in the distance, but always lovely to see. Gorgeous, well, you never know, he might come back. Oh. 
Right, well I haven't had to go far to see my first hares. There's two just on the track down here. Really lovely. They're in the short kind of green grass that leans along the track. The nice thing is because they're this end, I've got this really good kind of background of the track pushing all the way off into the distance. Meaning that of course with a 600 mil, get myself in position, be a nice low angle, shoot along the track and it means I should get really nice green pleasing background that look really nice. What I'm gonna do is just get in here, get myself settled down on the track. What I'm gonna do is just drop the tripod down first. You don't wanna kind of get inside of your subject and then be fiddling around with your tripod. Always like to get it done first. But they seem pretty chill, they're just feeding on the edge. They're also doing the thing where they do their little boxing hands. They always do that when it's been raining, kind of to wipe off all the water and they clean themselves. And you know, if you can get them nice and relaxed when they're cleaning, preening, it gives you a really great opportunity to get really close. It's always been my technique when I've been out and about. No matter if I'm on an island like this where the hares are a little bit more confiding or back in Hertfordshire, whenever you see animals preening and looking after themselves, they're really comfortable. It means you can edge that little bit closer. There's a good chance to move forward and get just in that perfect position. He's literally just running behind the camera right now. He's just heading down to the toilet. They love that bit there. Um, there's a couple of tracks that lead over, but he's behind a gorse bush, so he's not too worried about me. But I might just move into position and uh, get a shot or two. Let's see if I can get a bit nearer. Oh, that's a gorgeous spot there. Stay there. So the hare has just dipped behind up there on the track. That means I've kind of lost him from view. But this area here is perfect for this style of images. There's really clean portraits. I'm using the long telephoto lens to compress um, the background and foreground um, and basically just render them completely out of focus to really isolate my subject. Now, of course, I'm using a 600 f4, but I'm not opened up to f4, I'm at 5.6. I want a little bit more depth of field to get that maximum amount of detail on my subject. I'm using a tripod, so not too worried um, in terms of shutter speed to make sure everything's still. Um, but you know, it's all about your position um, when you're shooting images like this. It's about getting that perspective that's really low, looking along your subject, maintaining um, that kind of parallel view. And that's how you can really get those backgrounds and foregrounds to be really creamy and out of focus. Sometimes I see people set up a bit too high and they're looking down. The moment you do that, you basically mean that the background is near your subject and they're never gonna look as good. You wanna get low and shoot straight across and sometimes get even lower than your subject to, to really make the most of foregrounds. Here, as I look down the, um, the track, I've got absolutely miles, I mean, not literally miles, but there's a good 100, 150 meters down the track that is so far for a background, it's absolutely perfect. With an f4 lens at 600 mil, I only need two or three meters to get it completely out of focus. If you're working with something like a 5.6 or a 6.3, you're gonna want a little bit more than that, maybe, you know, five, 10 meters to make sure it's out of focus. But the real key is making sure that you are as low as your subject and getting parallel to it that's how you're gonna isolate it and get those really nice backgrounds. But right, as he's dropped down behind that dip, and I can see a couple of hairs a bit further up, I'm gonna keep moving. Crawling along on my front, I spent some time edging along the track to get myself into closer and closer positions with the hairs, working firstly to shoot some classic portraits with the 600 mil, it working perfectly to isolate my subjects against that foliage and sky. As I neared the close focus limit, the built-in teleconverter proved really useful at close distances, offering me a chance to have some different framing options for some really tight and intimate portraits. The 840mm focal length, very different to what I've come accustomed to with my older 300mm 2.8. It's fascinating to watch the hairs at this magnification, but it really takes time to wait for the little moments that can work with such tight compositional constraints on the images. 
I followed one hair down into a slight dip on the track, giving me the ability to frame with only sky as a background, giving me what turned out to be a couple of moments of photographic gold. My favourite, a frame filling shot, with the ears of the hair arching across the top of the frame, leading you to the eye. This one will certainly be in the portfolio, and maybe even a print. As I was crawling my way along the track, the hair that I was looking for was down in the dip and uh, met up with another one and they've moved off into the gorse. Now I'm not going to follow them into the gorse because to be honest it's not really the best looking for the sort of image that I was after tonight. It's a bit busy in terms of the backgrounds and foregrounds, there's a lot of stuff in the way and I tend to find that actually it's going to work better for the wide angle images in there. The hairs are a lot more confiding in the gorse and I can get a bit closer um, and using the 600mm could be quite tricky because I've got to be far enough away in order to actually get them the right size in the frame but um, you know I've also got to look through so much foliage that means it's it's very tricky to get a nice clean shot that you know this track is absolutely perfect for. Now also the weather is closing in I was really hoping and kind of pretty positive about the outlook as when I came out the door all the clouds were pushing away moving off into the distance and I thought that they might open out I'd get some last light for the evening however a new storm cloud has now rolled in completely wiped out any of the light that was there and there is nothing left that means that you know I'm already down to like a hundredth of a second that probably isn't going to be enough for the sort of shot that I was after on this track. Now that kind of leaves me with a bit of a problem of what to do to finish off the day. Um, I could just wait here and hope that some of the hairs come back. I might get a few shots if I really slow down, um, you know, with good tripod technique, I can shoot a clean and sharp portrait at a hundredth of a second, sixtieth of a second, but it's probably not going to be anything special. And so what I'm going to do instead is just push back up there, get to the top of that little mound that looks out over the kind of salt marsh beyond um, towards where the storm clouds are coming and just see if there's any chance of any final light, maybe something a little backlit or even a silhouette shot, um, you know, with the storm kind of coming behind might be quite interesting. But you know, at the end of the day, I've come out this afternoon, I've had a good hour really with the hairs, a couple of nice portraits out in front of me, I'm getting really quite close to them. It's an absolute pleasure to be able to see wildlife like this. I've seen a barn owl, marsh harrier, there's loads of birds about, all the gulls, the nest, breeding colony down there, um, pied wagtails, all sorts of stuff that's just lovely to see. It's just really nice to be out. I look at wildlife photography like it would be quite boring if you nailed a shot every single time. If you came out of the door, went to your local nature reserve or wherever you happen to be going after and got a shot every single time, it would get a little bit dull. So you want to have to work for the images. And even though the hairs here are pretty confiding, I can get quite close, it's still putting that effort in making sure that I'm thinking about the shots, working the location to the best of its ability to get something a little bit different. And right now, with the light coming in, closing down, it's probably not worth it. So I'm gonna wander up there, see what I can find, and if not, call it for the night. Because you know, it's getting on for eight o'clock, need to have some dinner, and I'll probably be up at half four. So, um, you know, if the light isn't doing it, and it's not working, sometimes call it for the evening and crack on in the morning. But I still will just pop up there and have a look. Oh, did you see that? Epic lightning. So right, I've moved down, I've stopped with hairs. You know, if I get a hair out here, that'd be absolutely epic. But the thing is right now, there's loads of beautiful gulls about, absolutely low. Gulls. They are so underrated as a bird. Um, but you know, just getting them passed across with this light is absolutely great. You know, the fact that they're white and slate grey with this slate grey and white background is just really cool indeed. And I've also 
got kind of a look down um, the colony in front of me. That means I might get a few birds landing and stuff like that. I'm still working pretty low in terms of shutter speed, pushing up to 6900 ISO. I'm just about getting 500 a second that will hopefully freeze what I need. Um, but you know, I'm just gonna work this unless the storm comes a bit too close because then I'll get inside because being on an island that is completely flat and standing here with a tripod probably is not the best thing to do. There is this epic cloud coming towards me that is so cool. But um, right, I'm gonna have to shoot that way because the light is really neat. Right, well as it's starting to hammer it down, I'm probably gonna call that a video. Wasn't exactly what I had in mind for my first from Havergate. A few nice pictures of the hares, getting down that low angle on the track. Um, but then just being here with the epic scenery has just been amazing. Thunder in the air, lightning, just awesome. And when you're on your own in a kind of wild place like this, it's just that little bit more special. But uh, right, as it is gonna hammer it down, I'm gonna call it a day, get inside and have something to eat. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Right, catch you soon.